I want to give you an update on what's going on with the lab and with the university. Uh, first off, we are still open. Um, everyone is working remotely from uh, campus right now, so most of the staff is working from home. But we are all on Zoom, we're all on uh, email, we're all on the phone, including, uh, I believe, all of the student project teams. There's a few new changes in terms of rules besides the remote work. We cannot travel, uh, so that means that we're not allowed to leave uh, the Auburn University area and uh, we cannot have visitors, so no one is allowed to come visit the, the campus or the RFID lab. Also, um, for those of you who have uh, questions and concerns about the uh, art program testing, specifically the in-layer performance testing, or with the supplier validation testing, those programs are continuing. So we do have a way for the uh, teams to continue to work on the chamber testing, uh, we've essentially divided those teams up so that there's no overlap between the employees and sanitize that area and everything. So that work will continue. And then also for the supplier validation, that work is continuing as well. Uh, we're still receiving packages. We're still testing those. We're just doing a lot of that uh, remotely. Shouldn't see any major disruptions in uh, output or work from the lab with the exception of the fact that um, you can't come see it right now. Um, the only other thing that we've noticed is, uh, as you probably have as well, um, all of the industry events that we had for uh, the spring um, are, have all been uh, moved or canceled off to different times and locations. So we don't have any upcoming events right now uh, that we're going to be out there participating in. So short recap, we're still here, we're still working, all the student teams are working, you should be able to get a hold of everyone. If you can't, contact me and I'll, and I'll uh, help you get in contact back again. Uh, art program is continuing, supplier validation is continuing, shouldn't see any mural disruption in any type of, uh, of the services and the work that we're doing right now. And we'll have another update for you again as uh, more information becomes available. Right now it is St. Patrick's Day, it's March 17th. We're seeing a pretty significant impact on retail. You can clearly see it yourself because a lot of the mall stores are closed and a lot of your grocery stores are probably going pretty wild right now. What is happening from what we can tell is uh, the supply chain is kicking into overgear. There's a lot of product that is flowing through, especially the stuff that people are gonna need every day. Our retailers are doing a pretty good job of keeping up with this. There's been some odd demand spikes. You've probably seen 9,000 uh, memes of toilet paper online, uh, but uh, everything should be evening up and catching up pretty soon. One thing that has been interesting on this though is, uh, and you've probably seen this as a recommendation, as guideline is for a buy online and pick up in store. So the recommendation is uh, people use the online purchasing services so that they can go to the store and pick the things up rather than going in the store directly. Bopus usage in retail is up at least 400% from the retailers that we've been talking to. So wow, I mean, this was already going to be a year where that was going to be a heavy focus, but it is really just um, um, spiking right now. We got a lot of people that never had any experience with these online pickup sales channels that are now getting really into it. Um, we're curious as to how much that's going to retain uh, after this all kind of tapers off and a lot of these events calm down, but once people get a taste for it, we'll, we'll see how that kind of goes. Those BOPUS requests are also going to uh, come with a corresponding uh, demand for higher inventory accuracy. Really one of the biggest drivers for RFID adoption as you all know in the past year has been because BOPUS is so frequently wrong or disappoints customers. I think right now most of those BOPUS requests are on grocery items and we're just pushing so much inventory through when they can that uh, they're covering up uh, inventory inaccuracy issues with inventory volume. Uh, however, um, as people get into things outside of the necessities, especially getting into electronics and others, there's a lot of people buying TVs right now, believe me, then um, we are going to see some corresponding demand spikes there. Oddly, I think the demand for inventory accuracy is way up, um, but this is an odd time. So um, uh, we'll see how that kind of uh, plays out in the long term. Uh, but uh, we're getting a lot of phone calls and requests for, for help and support right now and with RFID and other technologies. On the aviation front, I don't have much to comment on there. It's, a, it's an odd uh, situation out there right now with a lot of the travel bans and shutdowns and so on and so forth. So uh, more to come here in the next uh, few months as we go forward. 
but right now, most things are kind of continuing at pace, but they're going very slowly. Um, clearly, uh, uh, there's been a lot of uh, disruptions in aviation, so we'll address that um, and we'll once we have a little bit more visibility to that a little bit further down the line. The chip paper finally released. So I think this released just after our last video. Please go out there and check it out. We got a massive amount of press coverage on this thing. Uh, I believe uh, uh, the last report I saw was about 30 to 40 different uh, media outlets picked this thing up and ran with it. We had videos, we had stuff going on everywhere. Um, so please go out there and look it up. Uh, you can look up a, a chip blockchain paper with Auburn University, uh, or you can go to our webpage and social media and you'll see a lot of those things that are going out there as well. So very strong coverage, lots of good questions, lots of good follow-up and updates. Uh, um, we are very proud of that thing. The reception and the response has been outstanding. And we are moving into phase two now. So we're having some pretty deep conversations with uh, several different brands and retailers on how we're going to get into uh, phase two of this thing. Phase two, keep in mind, is the actual pilot where we're looking at the, the business value on this. Um, so uh, more to come on that. Uh, but so far, I've been very proud of that one. The board meeting was a couple weeks ago. So um, we had a board meeting. It was the first time we've had it in a Horton Hargrave Hall. It was outstanding. We had an excellent venue, perfect weather. We had the rooftop terrace, everything for the reception. Man, it was great. Uh, could not have gone better. I got a, a large number of positive comments on both the agenda and the venue. Um, that board meeting was strictly focused on uh, retail. Uh, we're moving the uh, Aviation Advisory Board uh, into an advisory board model which will meet in conjunction with uh, industry standard events because of travel issues and things like that. We had great presentations down the line. We had an excellent BOPUS discussion, talked about the chip paper, did a big release for that. Um, we had a, a gentleman uh, that came and presented on uh, loss prevention from one of our retail partners and some of the ways that they're using uh, technology to kind of help uh, uh, improve with uh, tracking down thieves and things, and it was really good. Um, you can see a video recap of that board meeting. Our uh, social media team did an outstanding job of putting together kind of a little short recap video. So you can see the venue and some of the stuff we did there. And then also, there's another video that we released at the same time. This is another one I'm really proud of. It is a end-to-end -end supply chain video of how RFID works in the supply chain. Um, it's out there on our YouTube page and it's on our social media channels as well. That video, it's about uh, four minutes long, I think, but it really shows everything from um, the need for an inventory count to uh, stocking or replenishing these things to DC operations to shipping to receiving and so on and so forth. So for those of you who are newer to the space and want to know how the technology just works from an end-to-end -end supply chain perspective, you don't have to really get too, too deep into the data transfer and the blockchain and all that stuff. Just straight up, how does RFID fit into the supply chain? There's a good primer out there for that now too. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. That's a really good video. I'm very proud of the, the team that put that together too. Last thing that I will mention for today is the ARC program. ARC program is getting a lot of hits. Um, there's a lot of upcoming projects this year. It's a uh, pretty fast expansion. Um, there's some things that are coming to that program, which will be some uh, uh, expansion changes coming into this year. So stay tuned and you will hear more about that in the next few weeks to come. Uh, again, as always, any questions, comments, whatever, uh, email us, call us, and uh, we are here. And we will see you again next month. Thank you.